God says, you know, it's a gift of righteousness. You say that, no, I, Lord, I, 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 let me just uh, uh, do some things and all that. I'll please you. I promise you, I'll please you. It's an insult. Hey, what's up, guys? I want to talk to you guys about righteousness really quick, okay? Um, we're going to watch a, f a few clips, and uh, we're going to talk about what is scriptural, what's not, what's going to help you, what's actually going to hinder you from walking like Christ um, has commanded you and empowered you to walk okay so let's just listen to the first part of this video so this video is is called um confessing righteousness um the original video i'm looking at right uh so let's see what this confessing righteousness um is saying is teaching the body of christ to do God says, you know, it's a gift of righteousness. You say that, no, I, Lord, I, 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 let me just uh, uh, do some things and all that. I'll please you. I promise you, I'll please you. It's an insult. Right? The best approach is, thank you, Lord. I receive this gift. Look at Romans 5, 17. This verse, the word those who receive, is present active participle tense in the Greek. Now, what does that mean? Present active active present active that means it's something that you keep on keep on receiving now i understand some people might misunderstand pastor prince does that mean that i become unrighteous when i go to bed at night next day i must receive again no 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 once you receive the righteousness of god jesus the bible says in daniel 9 he brought in everlasting righteousness you cannot lose your righteousness so right here we just heard that when you receive righteousness, you can lose righteousness. And that trying to do things to please God, it's it's not what God wants. God just wants us to say, I receive it, you know, it's mine, boom, that's it. Um so see, there's two 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 things to look at. Number one, are we talking about when we initially come to faith in Christ, when we initially turn to God and receive the forgiveness of our sins? and receive relationship with God, right standing with God, peace with God, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Is that what we're talking about? Because if that's what we're talking about, then yes, it's nothing that we had to do, nothing that we worked for, nothing that we earned. Grace is a gift. So the Bible says that Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin so that we sinners could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, this is only in Christ Jesus through faith in him. Justification by faith. That's gospel. That's scripture. OK, Martin Luther brought great revelation to the body of Christ in his day. And he reformed and he stopped a lot of the stuff that the Roman Catholic Church was doing, the way they were misusing, misinterpreting um, and misinterpreting handling scripture and stuff and adding stuff to scripture right but however when it comes to us now that we're christians now that we have believed now that we have been born again now that we have received righteousness and become the righteousness of god in christ jesus the bible tells us something a little different than just confessing righteousness something a little differently than just keeping a mindset of righteousness the bible tells us clearly to practice righteousness. Now, if you look at the word practice, there's no Hebrew, there's no Greek that is going to get you out of the real clear, obvious definition of practice. Practice means doing. Practice means conducting yourself in. Practice means working righteousness, doing righteousness, behaving righteously. See, that's completely different than what a lot of preachers are saying today. And it's confusing a lot of Christians, causing Christians to just confess and talk righteousness, but not actually do it like real followers of Jesus, not actually do it like Jesus did. See, see the Bible said that Jesus never sinned. So we know he practiced righteousness. He didn't just confess the things the father said to him. He did something. In fact, when the Bible says that the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said it after, not before, after Jesus fulfilled all righteousness, according to the scriptures, after Jesus did the will of the father, after Jesus was going to the temple, learning the scriptures, uh, right? Growing in wisdom, growing in stature, growing, right? 
and he was getting into the word, going, listening to preaching and growing. And it says he was obedient to his parents. And then it says that he was even baptized by John the Baptist. And it says he fulfilled all righteousness. The Bible says that Jesus only did what the father wanted him to do. What is that? Obedience. What is that? Righteousness. What is that? Good fruit. So after Jesus did this, that's when the father said, I'm well pleased with him. See, nowadays, I don't know where we get this custom from. We like to tell people, God is pleased with you. And we don't even know how they're living. And we have the guts to say, God is pleased with them. when we don't know if they're in disobedience or disobedience, righteousness or unrighteousness. We don't know if they're walking in the flesh or the spirit. And that's not what the Bible teaches in the New Testament, guys. It's completely unscriptural. Okay, the Bible says, check it out. The Bible says that, when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness, right? So when we were just by nature, just mere flesh, just mere sinners outside of Christ, enemies of God, before we believed in Christ and were born again, it says we were slaves of sin and free from righteousness, meaning we, we had nothing to do with righteousness. But now since it's the other way around, and we are slaves of righteousness, the Bible says in Romans 6, then we must have nothing to do with sin, with unrighteousness. It doesn't go together. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Jesus said, light shall expose darkness. <laughs> Jesus said they hated him because of the works that he did. Righteous works, good fruit. Their hearts were wicked. But Jesus was walking in real love, in real righteousness, conducting himself in real holiness. See, we don't mix. We're no longer the same. We're no longer just mere flesh. We've actually received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is holy. It's the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness. Why? He's the spirit of God. The Bible says that there is no evil, no sin, no darkness, no wickedness in God. So what are we supposed to walk like? It says, walk according to the spirit, walk according to God. It says, be imitators of God. It says, be led by the spirit of God. Sons of God are led by the spirit of God. Not sons of God are still going to walk in the old things and just confess righteousness because it's all about your confession. It's all about your, no, 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 no. It's all about now that you're born again, you live it out by the power of the spirit. That's why it says this in 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, it says, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Hebrews 12, 14 says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See, people like to tell you, you can lose your salvation. You can lose righteousness. Here, the Bible tells you, Play. Listen, multiple times Paul talked about people walking away from the faith, people leaving the faith, right? People walking away from the doctrine of the, of the apostles, right? It tells you people no longer really following Christ, but actually becoming enemies of the cross of Christ. <laughs> and here in 1 Thessalonians 4, it says, or, or in Hebrews 12, it says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And in 1 Peter, it says, that we are to be holy in conduct. So no, holiness is not just a confession of your identity. Holiness is the way you conduct yourself, action, your works, your fruit. How many times did Jesus talk about good fruit and good works? Now, plenty of times, right? So it's, it's just obvious that it's something that we have to do. Our actions must change. I mean, we know that we were justified by faith, but James clearly states that faith without works is not faith at all. It's not complete faith. It's not real faith. And we must have the faith that Abraham had. And he actually took his son Isaac to kill him just because God said so. So we must do whatever God says so. That's righteousness. That's real faith because it has works with it. It's not just confessing righteousness. It's actually doing righteousness. That's the gospel. How? Because we have the spirit. How? Because now we have relationship with the father. How? Because now we can read the word and have our minds renewed with the truth, with the knowledge of God. And guess what comes when we renew our minds? The Bible says in Romans 12, it says transformation. How could you expect to act the same when you've been born again, when you've received a whole different spirit within the spirit of holiness, the spirit of God. Let's look at this some more. If you sin, all right, you're still righteous or else the sin is greater than the righteousness that God gave you. So I just said a mouthful just now, whether you understand or not, all right? It is the truth. 
Okay? Only when you know this truth, you can overcome sin. Now listen carefully. It means you must be continually and perpetually conscious that you are righteous, that this gift is on you. Why? Why must you be constantly conscious? Why? Because every single day, you have temptations. Every single day, sometimes, it's not just temptation, you cross the line. All right? Your thoughts may go awry. Your eyes may be wayward. Your feet might go to a wrong direction. So whatever it is, God says, every day, don't forget. Confess you are righteous. And all these things that you desire will be added. Let's stop right there. So, man, he he said a handful for sure. Um, Man, so let's start with the last thing that that this preacher said. He said, (laughs) confess righteousness and all these things and whatever you want will be added to you. That's not what the scripture says. Matthew 6 says, seek God's kingdom, seek God's righteousness, not confess it, seek it, pursue it, go after it, become it, apply it to your life. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a confessor and a talker. Don't be a hearer and a reader. The Bible says in James, be a doer of the word of God. And that's all that's saying. So be a doer of righteousness, practice righteousness, seek God's righteousness, and these things shall be added to you. In the context of Matthew 6, 33, these things is talking about food, drink, and clothing. Nothing else, nothing more. Not riches, not no, you know, gold clothing and jewelry and, you know, rock star, uh, you know, lifestyles and stuff like that. Okay. So don't get, don't get it twisted, guys. Seek righteousness, not confess it. And God, and you don't even have to worry about the, the food, the drink, the clothes. God, God will take care of you. He takes care of the birds and the grass. Don't worry about that. Just worry about righteousness, meaning seek it, pursue it, apply it, practice it, train yourself in righteousness, the Bible says. The Bible says that the scriptures are so that we can be trained in righteousness, (laughs) right? It's not about confessing it. It's about actually becoming it in our action, okay? Um, Look, so let's take a look at this. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1.13, therefore, gird up your loins, Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So there's a grace that is to be brought to us when Jesus returns, okay? There's plenty of scriptures that talk about that salvation that's to come, the salvation that's to come when Jesus appears, to put our hope in Jesus' return because of our salvation, because of the redemption of our bodies, because of our glorification, So there's still something to wait for. We still have to hope on something else. When the Lord returns, that's when our salvation, right, will actually be completed. Okay, that's why it says he's able to complete what he begun in us. Okay, that's why it says endure, right, Um, persevere, fight the good fight of faith, run your race with endurance. We have to keep on going. If we don't keep going and give up and walk away, then whatever we were hoping for, we're not going to receive, like, Faith without works is, and justification comes by, and what, come on, like, we just got to add up all these scriptures. So it says, as obedient children, not, as what children? Confessing children? Just, oh, just confess, no, no, obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust. That means lust that are not supposed to be here anymore. As in your ignorance, because we did them before we knew Christ. But as he who called you is holy, God, right? You also be holy. See, this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. A lot of people say holiness and righteousness is a mindset, an identity, or a confession. Right here it says, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. All your con- conduct means conduct. Conduct means action. Conduct means fruit, means works, means what you're doing. Let's not get it twisted. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality, 
judges according to each one's work. Uh oh, let's stop right there. The Bible says that God, that the Father, judges without partiality. That means just because you confess Jesus, just because you confess you're righteous, doesn't mean He's going to judge you differently. He's going to judge every single person, whether they confess, whether they, they, they believe they're righteous, whether they confess they're righteous, whether they go to church, whether they call themselves Christians. It says He's going to judge every person without partiality according to each one's work works not according to each one's confession according to each one's work not according to each one's intentions according to each one's works that means actions this is serious that's why the bible says work out your salvation with fear and trembling that's why the bible says fear god like come on guys conduct your uh, there goes the word conduct again so we heard conduct conduct and work this stuff is not being preached today. And that's why we have a lot of people who are going to church, but don't have holiness, who are healing the sick and evangelizing and don't have good fruit. They're not glorifying the father. Jesus said many will come to him in the last days. Many will come to him, right? Whenever he's there in front of them, ready to, ready to judge, many will come to him saying, Lord, Lord, that's a confession. Confession doesn't save you. And they will say, we prophesied, we heal the sick, we work miracles, we did all these mighty things. Was that ministry? Ministry doesn't save you. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And guess what? Guess what? He doesn't say, I never knew you because you didn't confess. He said, I never do you. I never knew you. You workers, you doers of iniquity. <laughs> See, even Jesus prophesied that he was going to judge according to each one's works, not their confession, not their ministry, not them calling him Lord. He doesn't care about that. Are you following me or not? Are you serving and obeying me or not? That is Christianity, guys. And we have to take it seriously and embrace it and repent. Okay. Another thing that, that this preacher said, he said, if you stumble, if you cross the line, past temptation, he said, confess righteousness. The Bible says in first John, if you sin, repent, confess your sin, not confess righteousness. <laughs> right. If you look at the Bible and you can even look at a regular dictionary, righteousness is the opposite of sinfulness. They are the opposite. The Bible says, if you sin, confess your sins to God. This preacher just said, if you sin, just confess your righteous before God. That's the opposite. That is very unscriptural preaching. Please be careful. Okay. First John 1 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you have something to confess because you sinned, and he's forgiving you of unrighteousness, that means you were not righteous. That was not righteousness. How can you confess something that's not true? That is not sober. That's not biblical. It's outside of truth. And where there's no truth, there's no freedom because only the truth sets you free. Let's get out of this false doctrine, guys. It's only hurting you. Trust me. And if you're not realizing that it's hurting you on this earth, you will realize that it's hurting you on the afterlife when the Lord judges you for your unrighteousness. If that's what you're walking in, okay? If, if you're actually being one who, being one who follows the Lord and is a doer of the word, then you don't have much to worry about. But if you're listening to this type of preaching, I would, you know, bet my bottom dollar that you're not walking in, 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 in obedience and real faith, according to James. Real faith has works. Amen. Um, so conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, it says in 1 Peter 1.17. So conduct yourselves in fear. How? Like, not like, oh my gosh, I'm just afraid of everything. No, no, no. I'm afraid to not live out my Christianity because I know God will judge me one day and I'm afraid of his judgment if I'm not right with him. We become right with him when we initially believe, but we must remain right with him. Okay. <laughs> and if you believe that you don't have to remain right with him, that just because you initially believed and confessed and nothing can change, then you haven't been reading the whole New Testament because you, you, you'll get to the book of first Peter. You'll get to the book of, uh, uh, of Jude, first John. You'll get to the book of obviously Revelation, but you'll get to the book of, um, of James, and you'll see that actions, that works, that real holy conduct is expected of you. That's why Jesus said, narrow is the road. Not because only a few people were going to confess him and start going to church. No, there's a lot of people. Look around every corner and every corner, every street, there's a church, guys. 
Look around on Instagram and Facebook. There's Christians everywhere. But Jesus said the, no, the road is narrow. That means the ones who are actually living it out and who will actually end up in the kingdom of God, who will actually have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life and receive eternal life are very few. We're going to be very few. So we have to take it seriously. That's why it says in fear, fear. If we just, oh, if we already believe and confess and nothing can send us to hell, then there's no reason to fear. Why would it tell us to work out of salvation in fear? Why would it tell us to conduct ourselves in holiness? Why would it tell us to conduct ourselves in fear while we're here on earth? It doesn't make sense if we can't lose our salvation. If all we have to do is confess we're righteous, meaning just hypocritically walk in denial. If you're sinning and you're confessing you're righteous, that's denial. That's not true. That's not being sober and vigilant. The Bible says be sober, be sound minded. Right? Don't be in denial calling yourself something you're not. Jesus said a tree is revealed by its fruit. Let's get serious. Amen. Let's, let's get serious, guys. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 14 through 15, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if, check it out, if they continue in faith in love, in holiness, in self-control. How many times does the New Testament tell us to put on righteousness, to put on the Lord Jesus, to put on the new man, to put on love, right? To put on and pursue peace, right? And to put off the old man and his former conduct. The old man is just is not just an identity or mindset. It says put off the old man in Ephesians 4. Put off the old man and his works. Put off the old man and his conduct. <laughs> put on the new man and of course his conduct and the bible says in, in ephesians 4 that the new man is created according to god in true what righteousness and holiness so if righteousness and holiness has to do with the new man and they're the opposite of the old man and it says put off the old man's conduct that means that our conduct is supposed to be holy and righteous it's a works thing it's a action thing come on guys Come on, guys. You, you can't claim you are, uh, you can't claim you're a cat, you know, or a tiger if you're not meowing, growling, and hunting. Like, you can't claim you're Superman if you can't fly. You can't claim you're a baseball player and you don't know how to, how to pitch. You don't know how to bat. You don't know how to swing. Like, we have to walk this. Christianity is so real. God is so real. Jesus is so real. The Holy Spirit within the believer is so real. But we act like it's not. So we, we, we break it down. We tone it down. We water it down to just a confession to just, Oh, you know, it's okay. Just forgive yourself. Just forgive yourself. Just keep, keep confessing your this. Keep confess. They're basically teaching us to, to just walk in denial. And that's not the gospel. The gospel is a gospel of being born again into a new creation. And therefore your kind of being completely transformed, a renewing of the mind, a process of transformation, a growth and maturing, following Jesus. Amen. Following Jesus in the new Testament. We can't act like we didn't see people get killed or get sick or get reprimanded heavily by Jesus, his apostles, or by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we see that in the New Testament all the time. So how are we going to act like God doesn't have a problem with certain actions or certain sins? That's not true. We read, we read Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. It says there's no, there's nothing wrong against these. God is pleased with these. Then we read the works of the flesh. It doesn't say God is pleased. It doesn't say there is no law against those. There is a law against those, right? We're, we're under grace, but we still have to be obedient to the law of the spirit of life. We still have to be obedient to the law of Jesus. Jesus said, love God with everything and love your neighbor. If we're walking in these sins and covetousness and hatred and lust and fornication, we're not walking in love towards either people or towards God. And we have to do both. That's real righteousness. That's real obedience. That's real Christianity, faith with works. Amen. So the Bible says that, that against these, there is no law in reference to the fruit of the spirit. And then it lists the works of the flesh. And it says, if anyone does these things, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is all the way deep in Galatians. This is super New Testament. Where is our excuse? We have to be very careful about what we're listening to and what we're believing. We have to stay in the word guys. Amen. So I want to bring you this video.
right? And this is a, a, a preaching clip from a preacher who, who preaches a lot about grace, a lot of, a, about righteousness, a lot about the new covenant, okay? And my job here is to help the believer. Who, whoever's watching me, I want to help you grow in Christ. I want to help you actually bear good fruit and actually please God and enter into the kingdom of God one day. So my job here is not to call anybody out, is not to say names. My job here is not to attack anybody's ministry, okay? My job here is to point out something that's wrong, that's not going to help you, that's unscriptural, and here to help you understand what's in the Bible, what is meant for the believer to read, to understand, to believe, and to walk in and apply in their lives. So we're going to look at this clip of preaching, and I'm going to tell you what the Bible actually says about that topic so that you can grow. That's what we're here to do. We're here to grow. We're not here to gossip. We're not here to complain. We're not here to cry. We're not here to attack other people and be jealous of their ministry. We're not here for none of that, but to allow the word of God speak and to allow the Holy Spirit to convict you, to teach you, to train you, and to transform you because that's the will of our Father. Amen. So let's grow. Let's take a look at this clip. But I tell you, when you're out there without the fellowship of the brothers here, when you're out there in Singapore alone, when you're out there in the streets, when you're out there walking in a mall, it's so easy when you fall or whatever to forget all these things and to say, and it cannot be so true. I just, I, you know, I, I deliberately sin, then I'm trying to take advantage of grace. The devil will try to reason you, with you all these things. But truth is truth. You are righteous forever. You know why we, we struggle with all these things? Because we are not listening long enough. That woman and all these people receive miracles, many of, many of them who receive miracles, they keep on saying, I kept hearing. I kept hearing, I kept hearing. Even this sermon today I share, it's not enough. You must keep on hearing. So the more you hear, the more you hear, all right, even verses that you think you know, the more you hear, the more you will have right believing. You have right believing in your heart, you have right speaking. All right, that's all you need to do. Okay, so right here, we, again, we keep hearing things like, you can't lose righteousness. Righteousness is forever. Um, just confess the right thing. And in Colossians 3, 6, I'm looking at it right now. It says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. This is future. Coming upon the sons of disobedience. Okay? Disobedience is the key word. <laughs> Did Jesus tell us to do things? Yes. So can we disobey them? Yes. Does the Bible in the New Testament under the new covenant to new covenant believers and followers of Christ, does the Bible command us to do things? Of course. So can, can we disobey them? Of course. What comes upon the sons of disobedience? The wrath of God. So how can we say righteousness and salvation and having a place in heaven is forever? That's not forever if you don't continue in the faith, if you don't have works with your faith. Okay, Ephesians 5, 6 says, let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. There's a very good scripture to apply right now to not let anyone deceive you with empty words. Stop listening to that preaching. That's not scriptural. The Bible says in the last days, people are going to look for teachers who will tell them what they want to hear, who will appease them and comfort them because they listen, people look, we People with sinful flesh, we love sin. We love the porn. We love the women. We love the man. We love the vanity. We love the money. We love the attention. We love the pride. We love to look tough. We love to put people in, we love to put people in their place and diss them and cuss at them. And we love to be jealous and we love to be hurt about our past. And we love, right? We love sin, right? So it's natural that people want to hear things that allow them or make them feel like they're allowed to stay in darkness, in sinfulness. And the Bible says, practice righteousness, walk in the light. There is no mixture. There is no reason why light and darkness should be mixed, right? It says, be separate from that. You're, you're the light of the world now. Be separate from darkness, right? These things shouldn't even be mentioned in the church, Paul says in his letters, right? So, People in these last days are looking for teachers and preachers who are telling them things that they want to hear, a.k.a. reasons why it's okay 
for them to still live in this sin and just confess righteousness or still still have hope for heaven while never being transformed and actually following Jesus and following his teachings and following his example, following his commands, right? So people are looking for preachers who will tell them it's okay to walk in the flesh. There are no consequences. You believed once, you confessed once, you got baptized once, you go to church now, it's all gonna be okay. Even if you do the things God hates, God will receive you. And we know that's not true. Like multiple times in the scriptures in the New Testament, it says the new covenant is better than the old covenant. And if the people in the old covenant that disobeyed or didn't believe the words of Moses, and didn't get away with it. They were not able to escape God's wrath and judgment. Much, like, much more, for more reason, will the people under the new covenant not be able to escape God's wrath if we disobey or not believe the words of Jesus because Jesus is greater than Moses, right? Same way, same thing. It says Eve got tricked by the devil, right? It says that, that Eve didn't do what God said, and guess what happened with her? She was judged. Adam was judged. The serpent was judged. The earth was judged. So do you think God did that in the beginning, even though they were right with God? And he's in Jesus, when he comes back and he judges, he's not going to do the same thing, even though we're right with him. Or a lot of us confess we're right with him and think we're right with him, but we're not really right with him. God doesn't change. So if people under the old covenant didn't get away with disobedience, People before the old covenant in the days of Adam and Eve didn't get away with disobedience, much less will we under the new covenant get away with disobedience. Same God. You know, that's the reason he gave us the Holy Spirit. People forget that the Holy Spirit is here to train us in righteousness, lead us into all truth, transform us and sanctify us and help us to live like Christ. Why would we receive the Holy Spirit if we're still not going to obey? That's not, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that we're going to be 100% perfect. Paul said he was being perfected. He was being made complete. He was still growing and maturing. He said he hasn't, he hadn't attained perfection yet, but he was fighting for it. He was racing and running and fighting and training himself and, and discipline and, and learning how to put his flesh on the subjection and, and learning how to walk in the spirit and deny himself. That's what we have to do. But if we don't act like we mean it, it's not going to happen. We're not going to grow. We're not going to leave behind those things that Paul says. When I was a child, I acted like a child. But now I'm putting aside those childish things. We got to put away those things of the flesh. They're not meant for the children of God. The Bible says that we are followers of Christ and we must be imitators of Christ. And we have the spirit of God within us. And that makes us new. And it's new creations in truth and in, in, in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians 4, 24. Come on. We're not supposed to act like the sons of disobedience anymore. And the Bible says, if you're sick, and every day you say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, I'm telling you one day, you'll just say, man, I just know that I'm healed by the stripe of Jesus. Amen. All right? But many people are getting up, and they're using whatever faith they have to believe God to be healed, believe God to be healed. But the foundation is wrong. They, 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 in their heart, they're not established in righteousness, but they're trying to get healing. No, what you need first, many a times, is to be established in righteousness, then you can believe God for a baby. Then you can believe God for healing. You can believe God for uh, uh, blessings on your company. Amen. Let's stop right there. So he said, all we have to do is confess righteousness. That's all we have to do. Nothing else. Right? He said it very clearly. Nothing else. Okay? The Bible says very clearly we have to deny ourselves. Now, you confessing that you're righteous doesn't sound like you denying yourself. <laughs> right? You, um, you... Confessing your sins doesn't sound like you confessing righteousness. That's the opposite. In the dictionary and in the Bible, the definition of sin and the definition of righteousness are quite the opposite. They're contrary to one another, just like the flesh is contrary from the spirit. Okay? So the Bible says you do have to deny yourself. The Bible does say you do have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible does say you have to seek God's kingdom and righteousness. It does say put off the old man. Put off anger. Put on the new man. Put on love. The Bible says be perfected in love. That sounds like a work. It sounds like a process of transformation to be perfected in love. <laughs> the Bible says that by reason of use, we must have our senses trained, right, to discern good from evil. The Bible says that we must have our senses trained by reason of use. That means by experience. We must train ourselves in righteousness. <laughs> 
We, the Bible says we must be skilled in the word of righteousness. We can't be babes. It says be mature. It says grow up. That sounds like a growing process. That's why I'm inviting you guys to grow with me as I grow with God. We must grow in Christ, guys. It's not just, oh, just keep confessing something. That's all you have to do. That's nonsense. You will never change like that. That's why in the times of this coronavirus, we see so many immature babies in Christ who've been in a church for 20, 30, 40 years, don't know how to act, don't know what to believe, don't know how to walk, don't, they don't even know how to expect wholeness and freedom from sickness and disease and plagues and all this stuff because they haven't been trained in righteousness. We're still babies out here trying to walk around, but all we do is crawl and claiming to be mature Christians and preachers. Okay? He just said, now, listen. A lot of the people who disagree with, with preachers like these, they also disagree with healing and stuff like this. But, you know, I, I'm in the word, non-biased. I'm in the word. I'm in relationship with God. I ask him to teach me. And I just see too many things in the scriptures that point to healing coming with righteousness and the forgiveness of sins for me to deny it. If we're under the new covenant, there is no reason why we should be cursed. And in Deuteronomy, we read about the curses of the law. And we read a lot about sickness and disease and plagues and stuff like that. In the New Testament, on the Gala in Galatians, it says that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. <laughs> we read that by his stripes, we've been healed, right? We read that Jesus gave his disciples authority over all sicknesses and diseases. Why would he give them authority of sickness and diseases if they can't even get it off of themselves? Now, something I do disagree with what he said is that all you have to do is have a right foundation on confess that you're righteous and believe that you're righteous so that you can receive the healing. That's that's kind of right. I kind of agree with that. You have to understand what covenant you're in. You have to understand that you're no longer an enemy of God and that you should no longer be cursed but blessed. The Bible says we are blessed with believing Abraham through faith in Christ. This is scripture. I'm not making this up. Okay. However, in the same New Testament, it shows of Christians, followers of Jesus, people, members of the church getting sick and dying because of disobedience. So if you haven't been living right, I don't believe that you can actually expect healing and receive it there like this preacher is insinuating um, and implying. OK, I believe that if you need to repent you need to repent. I believe if you haven't been living for God and you haven't really been practicing righteousness, it's kind of tough to receive the blessings of the new covenant than if you still need to receive some forgiveness. Okay? The Bible never teaches us that we must only ask for forgiveness one time and is when we initially believe in Christ right before we get baptized. No, the Bible says if you sin again, if you sin, you have to confess your sins before God and then he'll cleanse you from all righteousness. See, Jesus only had to die once, but the blood that he shed, that didn't disappear. That wasn't only shed one time or that wasn't only shed for one time's use. It was shed and it was put in the mercy seat in God's tabernacle in heaven. And that's why it says he's mediating for us. He's the mediator, the bridge, the gap, the intercessor. He's interceding for us, right? Why? Because the blood that was shed is in the mercy seat so that if we need the blood, we can confess, we can come to him. It says, come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace from God in your time of need. <laughs> okay? So if we need that mercy, we can come to him and the blood is already there. Jesus doesn't have to come down and die again. That's what makes him so powerful because all the other lambs and the bulls and the goats, they had to, you know, they died and they had to find other animals to sacrifice every year. All the other high priests, they were dying. So they had to get new high priests. Jesus is the high priest forever and the lamb, the sacrifice forever. But our repentance and, and our turning to him is not just a one-time thing. So if you, if you're not walking in that righteousness, you need to repent. Okay. And if you, you are in right standing with God, you are at peace with God. He doesn't have nothing against you because you haven't been living in sin. Then there's no reason why you should be cursed with a sickness or a disease. And now you can believe for healing, right? You can stand on the new covenant and the promises and blessings of God. Right. But I mean, we see that it says that people were bringing the wrath of God upon themselves. Right. It says that people were, were, were eating the Lord's Supper in an incorrect way. They were full of covetousness and, and gluttony and drunkenness. And guess what? It says they were dying and, and getting sick. <laughs> the Bible says that the father disciplines his children. 
okay? And that he disciplines his children so that they can get back on the right track, so that they may repent. So if you judge yourself, examine yourself, and, and you ask yourself, am I living righteously? Then he doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to spank you and, you know, and allow something to, to come upon you. And if something does come upon you, don't confess you're righteous. It's come upon you so that you can admit you've been walking in disobedience and repent and be free from his wrath. Okay, this is scripture here. I'm teaching you a lot, you know. Whatever it is, those things are added. What is the thing is adding to? His righteousness. Jesus' righteousness is an attractive magnet. It attracts all the blessings of God. It is also very repellent. It repels all the curses and all the negative things. And that's why the devil cannot make you stay long enough in that righteousness consciousness. His one sole attack is to remove you and your heart from being established in righteousness. Hence, we have these twin gifts to be received continuously. The consciousness must be continuous. And how do we do that? With our mouth, believing in our heart. Say it again. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And this is correct. However, the devil doesn't want us to conf doesn't want us to stop confesses confessing righteousness. The devil wants us to stop practicing righteousness. That's a whole different thing. That's why we must submit to God, resist the devil. That's why we must deny ourselves, right? Deny the things that our sinful flesh wants to do and submit to the Holy Spirit within us and allow him to tell us what to do, to convict us, to remind us of the word of God. And remember, no, 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 I shouldn't, I shouldn't be looking at this. I shouldn't be talking like this. I shouldn't be doing this. Okay. That's fear of the Lord. That's being led by the spirit. That's us resisting the devil. Like when Jesus did. Okay. Jesus didn't resist the devil by just confessing things. Jesus resisted the devil by remembering the word of God and therefore not bowing down to offerings of sinfulness. So Jesus resisted the devil by not doing what the devil wanted him to do and not accepting what the devil wanted to give to him. That's resisting the devil, not just saying, uh, it is written. No, no, because it is written, he didn't do certain things. Jesus didn't turn the stone into bread, did he? That's him practicing righteousness. He didn't just confess he's not supposed to tempt God. He act, or, or he didn't just confess that um, that, that the, his real food is the word of God, not just real bread, physical bread. He actually didn't convert that bread to food. That's actually him not doing something he's not supposed to do. So it's not just about confessing. The devil wants you to do the opposite of what you're supposed to do, whether you're confessing or not. I'm sure we all know hundreds of Christians who go to our church who are not living the Christian life. They just attend church and confess and sing along with the nice worship. You think the devil cares about that? Of course not. Because judge is not God, the judge is not going to judge anybody according to their worship or their confession, according to their praise or sacrifice. It says he's going to judge us according to our works. That's why he says he has no pleasure in offerings and sacrifices. If there's a, there's disobedience, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Okay, so let's seal the deal with this. And I know this is kind of a long video, but this is like the most important topic that I think the body of Christ needs to talk about because there's a lot of different doctrines, there's a lot of different beliefs, and there's a lot of different um, movements that are not teaching this, that are not promoting this. And that's why we have so many jacked up believers. Okay. Sadly. Okay. Let's go to first John three, seven. It says little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So who is righteous? The one actually doing righteous things. That's who is righteous, not the one confessing righteousness, the one who practices righteousness. Okay, I hope that you understand what I'm saying, and I hope you even go further and dig deep into the Word of God. Look up all the scriptures I just mentioned and, and, and see what sounds more scriptural, see what is repeated more, see what is more, um, see what is emphasized more. 
if it's what I just talked about, or if it's just a confession, see what's emphasized more in the whole New Testament, okay? Not just in one chapter of Romans, <laughs> in the whole New Testament, okay? Read the whole New Testament and read those scriptures I just told you and let me know if this helped you. Listen, guys, I want you guys to grow in Christ. I want you guys to live for God. Please, God, the Bible says that we died, right? That we died. We were buried with Christ, crucified with Christ, and we were ra- risen to do what? To live for God, to bear fruit to God. That's what he wants. It's the fruit, not the speech, not that, you know, acting in the hypocritical religiosity. No, he wants us to truly be transformed and live for him and please him. Okay, so I want you to comment on this video. Let me know what you think. Do you agree, disagree? I don't care if it's negative. Go ahead and comment. We'll talk about it, okay? If you think this is scriptural and this is beneficial to the body of Christ, share this video. I taught on the Word of God. We talked about the Word of God. This video wasn't a video just dissing somebody and and, and arguing. No, no, no. This is actually us doing what Paul and what Peter and what Jesus did. In regards to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the false teachers and and, and the false prophets. And and I'm not saying this man's a false prophet or false teacher or antichrist. I'm not saying all of that. That's, you know, a lot of times people get, you know, you know, way too extreme with that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just got taught the wrong thing. He might have good intentions, but he just might be ignoring some things or he might. We don't know. You know, that's God will judge him. I I don't know. I don't know if he, he means it. He doesn't mean it. He's. You got a demon. Does I, that's we don't know that. So let's not talk as if we know. All I know is that what we just heard was very unscriptural compared to what we just read in scripture in the context of how it's written. Okay, so that's what this video is about. It's to edify. It's to teach. It's to explain and elaborate on the truth. Because only the truth sets you free. So go ahead and share this video if you think this is beneficial. Subscribe to this channel. This is the first time coming to this channel. If you want a free prayer shirt, go to the link in the description below. If you want to sign up for our weekly Bible studies, online Bible studies, completely free. Every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and every Thursday night too. Sign up. The link is in the description below. And I'll be glad to have you in our Bible study through Zoom. And I'll be glad to read the word of God with you, to talk about the word of God with you, and to help you grow in your relationship with God and to teach you the word of God if you have any questions about it. We do that every Tuesday night and Thursday night. So sign up, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Let's grow.